All right, we're live. Welcome to another episode of the Marathon Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Campos, and today I have a always a special guest, but today I have a guest that uh, I've gotten to know a lot closer because we just did a I just had a closing on a on a house. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. And uh, so I'm going to introduce you, um, Sam Noyola, um, of Alio Fitness. Alio. Alio. Jen always cor- corrects me as well. Okay, Sorry, okay. bro. Alio Fitness. And um, welcome, bro. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, good to have you. Well, it's good to be here. Um, so I'll give a little background story real quick. We had your partner, Danny. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, it's been like two, maybe three years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, Has it been three years? It's been, it's, it, was bef- no it was during COVID. It was right before COVID wow. happened and everything, and and then that's why I kind of stopped um, the podcast. Fine. It is, um, I stopped the podcast because I couldn't do the one on ones. Oh, and, okay, and, gotcha. I, and I didn't want to do virtual and all that stuff. Yeah. So I was like, I took a break, and then it just took me a little while to come to start doing it again. And I, I missed it. So I got you. Um, but a uh, lot going on with uh, Alio and things going on, and I know. Oh. We've had a lot of discussions about business and different endeavors that you've, you know, ideas and things that you wanted to do and, and stuff like that. So, um, but the fact that Alio has been how long? Eight years. Eight years. Pretty much. Yeah. That's a long time in the gym world, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So that was another reason why, um, also being former client and going through the gym, knowing how, what kind of what y'all do, um, give us a little bit about Alio. So the people who don't know, um, as far as the type of gym it is, kind of like the concept, and then just kind of a little bit of background on it. Yeah, I mean, the reason why we opened up Alio is from because of our backgrounds, right? Well, I'm going to talk about myself. Yeah, yeah. Right? Well, I came from a personal training background, moved here in 08. I fell in love with it. But you only fall in love with something when you become good at it, when you start, you know, making money. I'm not, I didn't, we're going to talk about money here and there. I hate yeah. talking about money. Yeah. But at the end of the day is, you know, we have to eat, right? Yeah. Uh, so I fell in love with personal training after a while. And when I was ready to move on and resign from my corporate gym, uh, I decided to open up Alio. And really the main thing is giving that same personal, uh, training setting, but yeah. in a group, you know, so the programming, you know, capping it at 12 people per group, nothing more than that. Um, the, the fitness equipment is tied to the programming you know, we have cable towers, leg presses, stuff that you don't see in boot camps and, right. well, you know, so yeah. Favorite is the Jacob ladder. Jacob's ladders. Yeah. I mean, uh, we have, every, yeah, we have it all there. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't just the concept too. I mean, it's the design, like you, like your y'all's yeah. eye for things mm-hmm. and the design and everything. That's what another reason caught my eye back in the day. Um, so those little details. We got a lot of hype back in the day, like both negative and a lot of negative and, and some positive because it was different. A lot of negative, like what? You know, uh, I stand by it, and we, we are the first boutique gym here in San Antonio. When I say boutique, like, we're officially the first for sure. We took the biggest risk possible. Okay. And as far as the aesthetics, uh, that's something that I wanted to do. Do something modern. They saw us matte black walls. And I gained that. I saw that through the experience of, you know, being able to vacation at a point in my life. Yeah. And I was finally able to. Yeah. Right. I don't want to go too far back, but, you know, seeing certain things that I liked and so forth and just trying to piece something together, you know, both aesthetically and then the fitness aspect is, you know, my background. Yeah. Um, so. Get, what did you do before personal training? Wow. So, I mean, just I mean, what kind of led you into that? Yeah. Um, it's a crazy story. I mean, pretty much uh, from Corpus. uh since first grade, actually my first language is Spanish, by the way. Um, but uh, I was going to college, two-year college, Delmar College, uh, and I was going for business administration. Really, there was no direction. Yeah. In a sense, is, uh, my dad just told me to go to college. That's it. And I had to figure all that stuff on my, on my own. Went to financial aid office. Yeah. You know, ended up getting Pell Grants and, and so forth. And just I just enrolled business. That's it. Yeah. Uh, after two years, I was planning on transferring, most likely staying in Corpus, you know, just yeah. continuing. Like I said, just what you whatever know. happens, happens, right? Yeah. Um, and I had a buddy that had moved to San Antonio, and this guy I played football with in high school. And uh, this guy, he was, you know, your, your starting lineman and, you know, had everything going for himself. 
Uh, and it's funny because I, I just I met him in senior year of high school. It wasn't like or junior senior. We weren't like really good friends. I met him through yeah. another friend. Yeah. And uh, he was already a personal trainer actually in Corpus. And apparently he was good. I didn't really care. I was too naive. I was too young. I didn't care about anything, right? Sure. But he told me he was good. So uh, he had mentioned, you know, you'd be good at it. I was like, whatever. You know, I didn't really care. Yeah. He moved to UTSA. Um, and, uh, oh, he, he moved to San Antonio. Sorry. He moved to San Antonio, transferred to UTSA. And it's weird. Since he moved there, he would tell me, hey, man, you should move over here. But I was still going to Del Mar at the time. And it was, uh, I, I never thought I would move from Corpus, you know, I, Small city, yeah. You know, raised by my dad, paycheck to paycheck. I didn't know what was ahead sure. of me, and he kept begging me. He's like, "Dude, you should come. You should come. Come move in with me." Uh, he had a house. He bought a house somehow. He was twenty-one at the time. Mm-hmm. I don't know if his parents helped him. I have no clue. But uh, he wanted me to go in and rent a room from him. Yeah. And you know, at that point, long-term girlfriend, right? I've been with the same girl since uh. Freshman year of high school, you know, uh-huh. would be forever. High school you know? sweethearts, yeah, yeah. So leaving her, telling her, "Hey, I'm gonna dip out." I was like, "For a semester, we'll see what happens." That was one thing. But my, my mom's the one that actually pushed me. My dad actually raised me. Mom came back to my life. Mom's the one that said, "Hey, go do it." So after I graduated, took off. You know, I just did it. I got my personal tra- a personal trainer cer- certification. Uh, I remember I have X amount of money in my savings. Yeah. And so I drove from Corpus to San Antonio, got certified, came back. I was doing home uh, interviews over the phone with the GM, and I know I, bom- I bombed them for sure. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> the hookup was came from that guy friend, for yeah. sure because yeah. he was Good. he was a shit. Okay, uh, he was actually. I did, I kind of find out he was you know he was breaking records. Okay, yeah. Like in like in as far as how many personal training he was doing or what? No, so you know, like I said, I don't like bringing up money and so forth, but you know, revenue wise, I oh, mean, you okay. know, in a corporate gym, you know, it's it's all. Like comes down to sales, you sure. know that's the term we have to use. Um, and and he, I didn't even know you could make that much money until he showed me his check. You know, he's like, "How much money I can make?" And that's yeah. when I realized, I was, I said, I, "I'm very competitive by yeah. nature." I was like, "I want to do that." I was like, "If he can do it, I can do it." Yeah. But it was a struggle for a few for the first few sure. months when I ended up moving over there. And I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go ahead and keep asking because I'll keep rambling, man. No, 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 it's cool. Um, well, it's funny because like I'm I'm smirking because it's a very similar. Uh, story uh, for me in the sense of what got me out of, you know, my hometown because it literally was um, one of my best friends that was living in Houston. And he was like, bro, you need to, you need to move. You need to come up here. And, you know, it was, it was after college, you know, after my first year of college. And so I was kind of just still in McAllen. I was still doing, you know, working, you know, like you said, check a check and just whatever, just doing my thing, going to school, doing all that. And he kept telling me the same thing. He was like, man, you got to get out of there. You got to come up here. And for like, I don't know, I don't know how long it was, but he finally got mad and was like, fine, stay there. And he gave me this ultimatum. I can't really say on air, but he just, oh, yeah. <laughs> just the way he said it. And I was like, all right, whatever. And then I went, hung out with the same people that night, did the same stuff and was like, yeah. looked around and was like, right, I'm out. Yeah. And I called him that night and I was like, bro, I'll be there in two weeks. And he was like, yeah, whatever. And then. We gave my notice at the job and all that, but it's kind of funny how like you had like an outside influence, but your mom helped you, so that's cool. Like so, my dad is my, my mom pushed me because she came back to my life, but my dad is the one like his work ethic. Yeah, he was working literally like 70, 80 hours a week. Okay. Uh, I mean, it was crazy. So just seeing his work ethic, and on top of that, you know, uh, yeah. I do come from uh, the church background and so forth, and you know, uh, just the morals, yeah. you know, being ethical, honest. Most importantly, is just like his work ethic. Yeah, is you had that the as reason an example. I am yeah. right. You know who I am right now for sure. Yeah, but mom is the one that said, "Hey, just go, Mijo. Yeah, just go." I was like, you "There's lose. nothing for you here." And yeah, I don't know what would happen. I would have stayed in Corpus for sure. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, yeah. It was funny because he put he put a visual on what that looked like if I would have stayed. So that's what I meant. Yeah, but but no, but that that's awesome. And, and the fact that you took that leap of faith and and you moved over here it took you a minute. And then so like. I mean, how long were you doing the corporate gig before you did it? Before you did that? Oh, oh man. Uh, so I I moved in 08. This is funny, man. I moved it during the recession, and like I st- I didn't watch the news. I didn't do any of that, sure. man. I was I, I you know when you're raised a certain way, I felt like and you come to realize certain things as you get older, right? Like you know if I had like let's say I had established parents, right? And you know they're watching the news. They watch the news. They watch 
you know, their finances. I had yeah. I didn't have any of that. So yeah. I was actually glad that I didn't know about the recession because that wasn't an excuse. Yeah. You know, I, I wanted to be better because a lot of a lot of times a lot of people won't make excuses like, oh, the recession, no one's gonna buy this, no one's gonna buy that. Right. Luckily, I had a really good manager. Uh, shout out to James Williamson, amazing manager, man. Like that guy is, you know constantly just positive i remember the meetings in the beginning even when i was young and still just not really listening you know sure uh hey guys it doesn't matter it's a wait you bring up the recession it was like Got it. health is wealth yeah. you know it's hey people are always going to invest themselves da, da, da. never anything negative which is crazy because there's a lot of negative people in this world oh yeah and so yeah spectrum it was spectrum athletic goes by the way yeah. so it was 08 to 2013 with spectrum okay um and then we got bought out by gold's gym Okay. So 11 spectrums got bought out and completely different animal. Yeah. Business I culture. remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So Alio, um, was that you, was that you and Danny together? You met Danny through spectrum or how did that, how did Man, that come it's about? Freaking crazy dude. Uh, wow. So the, re- the reason Alio exists is, because of a purpose, a, a certain purpose, a her, certain life goal that I personally have. Okay. Right. The way I was treated in the corporate world, uh, with Spectrum Athletic Clubs, you know, that being said, the first four months, like I said, I struggled heavily, right? Okay. I almost got fired, technically. That's what Daniel told me. That's, it's uh, Daniel's the name of the guy that actually, okay. it's funny, right? Yeah. How ironic. But he told me, um, they had flew the top 10 trainers to San Francisco for, a cor- for a Spectrum. Mm-hmm. And when he got back, like this was during Christmas, that the first year, oh wait, he's like, yeah, James, James told me he wanted to fire you because your performance uh, wasn't that great. And I always tell this to everybody: is Spectrum's performance, me bad, being bad, is excellent at Gold's Gym. Looking back at the numbers, okay, it's weird, man. Like yeah. you, we had like heavy giants, like giants, like at Spectrum, like the best of the best. Okay, you know, and we were I was at Bandera Point. There was really good personal trainers there. It was twenty five people on the floor. Okay. You know, training people nonstop. Um, and so I went through, I believe, two comp plans, two compensation plans with Spectrum. And they were they're both good. Yeah. But you know how it is, right? You take away something. And then when I to Gold's Gym, completely different animal. I went to, I think, two more comp plans. So What's that? I, compensation plans, like how they pay you. Okay. The oh, compensate. Okay, got you. Personal training, the reason there's a 90%, 80% to 90% turnover rate is because comp plans are not, really set to to really yeah you know feed that's your family so yeah, yeah. that's why a lot of people like look down on personal trainers as a career sure it's not really a career yeah that's why i'm doing this shit yeah because that's my goal so the business model that i that I created for alio which we'll get there right now yeah is designed for that but everything just happened in a certain way it's not like i plan things like it's gonna be like this mm-hmm. at first it was it was uh when i met danny right yeah. in college I always kept it myself, yeah. right? I always had my uniform on. All I did was go to work, um, uh, go to work, uh, college, yeah. and then with my wife when I had the chance. Yeah. Um, I didn't really want to talk to anybody, man. Uh, just go to work back and forth, and I kind of got that from Daniel, the, the first, first guy. guy. He yeah. was all about the grind. Yeah. And I was like, I like, you know, I was like, all right, this guy knows what he wants. Yeah. Like, you know, it's it was good seeing just him grind, Example, yeah. right? And Danny, if you can tell you that story, how you met me, he said he just wanted to talk to me for whatever reason. Yeah. And I remember him talking to me like here and there. And I was like, I didn't, I didn't like Danny. <laughs> I didn't like the way he looked. I promise you. I was like, Who, this kid looks cocky. Like, I didn't like the, I didn't like the kid. Yeah. And then uh, finally, I just figured out, yeah, good personality. We started talking. Yeah. And I was like, and I didn't really know how good of a trainer he was. I'm not sure how exactly, if I can remember how I found out he was a, he was a really good personal trainer. Yeah. I had trained with so many of them that I seen it all. Okay. I've seen horrible personal trainers on the floor. As a matter of fact, there's probably an 8 out of 10 chance that you have a really bad personal trainer. Yeah. You won't even know that. Yeah. Um, and so, what, what that was I, what was I at going with this? Danny. Yeah, but we're, the, yeah, yeah, so really the comp plans, and I had sat down with Danny at one point finally for a meeting. That's right. And uh, I think we met, at, we met on this, uh, this bar on I-10. Uh, and we started talking about what we we're going to do. And it was actually going to be a fitness club okay. at first. Like, we want to do this, 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 you know, upscale and this and that. That was the goal. But, you know, come to terms, you find out how much it is actually to open up a big club. Yeah. It's bananas. Man, the reason Alio is the way it is right now is because I 
kind of fell into that. So I'm not sure. I'm sure you know the story of how. Yeah. Uh, Danny was running a gym. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Technically, it was a handshake where uh, the owners of that specific gym were absentee owners. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, Danny took a really bad deal because yeah. Danny was just 1099ing. You know, he was a 1099 trainer. I'm sure he was making good money, getting that cash or whatnot. Yeah. And then once the absentee owners from that specific gym got fucked over by the lead trainer who actually has it has a gym right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's whenever they went to Danny. I felt like they would take advantage of him in that sense. He was too young, but I think he just did it for the clout. Okay. You know, yeah. so he took over that stuff. And then when I came in and so forth, I used that model and then added personal training and I, it kind of just fell in to place. Yeah. It was already set. We're at, okay, we're going to do this with group training, da, da, da. And let's see what happens. Yeah. And that's kind of how it started, you know, panning out. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, yeah. So, I like the fact that, like, it's not, um, it wasn't this big, you know, y'all had this business plan and it all, you know, start from here and do all, you know what I mean? It, it was, like, a, a little bit of chaotic. I, I, we did do a business plan, man. We no, did, but it, it was literally yeah. about something else. It was yeah. like the whole fitness club is nuts, right? And I have yeah. it in my drawer. That's funny. Yeah. And, and so, like, uh, the fact that y'all had to scratch and claw to 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 make it work to get yeah. to where you're at right now. But I mean, I, I bring all that up because I want to, I want the backstory to, just to be a you know when you talk about it. But right now, for me, it's the fact that y'all have been in the game, like you know, as Alio eight years and just how y'all operate together, um, your clients that you guys have, um, including my wife. And so like, just the fact that like, um, you know, the type of like events that y'all throw, all the different things that you do for your clients that you can tell that there's, it's not just a number like, Hey, we, we, we're opening up, we want to make money, blah, blah, blah. Cause you don't usually last in the game when it's that like that. Correct. And so, you know, and the fact that all of y'all are doing, or not all, you and Danny, and and now that the growth, and now that you're, you haven't you haven't announced anything yet, but I mean, I know there's yeah, stuff in the works, yeah. and so like, uh, that's kind of what I wanted to, you know, just yeah. Talk so to you. so the thing you bring up the events and so forth, that was all from the experience I had with Spectrum. Okay. We, we used to do a, where the manager said, all right, pick two clients, we're gonna do a uh, little member appreciation event or client appreciation event. Yeah. So every trainer picked two clients, and then. They paid for us to go somewhere at a certain restaurant. Okay. So that's where I got that from. I love doing that shit. Oh, like, I it was, know. It was it's awesome. It's so awesome. I picked up a lot of stuff from like Spectrum that I liked. Yeah. Made a drum. And, and I and all the stuff that I went through at Gold's Gym. Yeah. Like stuff, you know, I was like, this is what I don't want to do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. No, and so for those that don't know, like there are events that they have like, you know, for different holidays and different yeah. things. Like the one I went to was a Christmas one. Yeah. And y'all did it like they get torchies and we had like the yeah. whole room and everybody came all dressed up and you had the games and stuff like that. And, yeah. uh, so it was pretty wild. And I love the fact that how y'all document it and everything else as far as video and stuff like that. So on y'all's on y'all's social. But like so just because for the podcast, like I, give me like going through from after you and Danny started Alio, like give me some like one of the some of the biggest hurdles. I know you said like people, you know, kind of shade on it and stuff like that but at the same time give me hurdles i mean like bigger ones Bro. No, no, yeah i know we don't we got uh, short you know time, I'm a, the thing is with me i'm a man of details sure, like i yeah. feel like everything is important like everything so and that's the thing when i talk to my wife and so forth like you talk too much you know yeah. but i'm just i think like every detail in life is important 100 but um well yeah i mean uh you know i resigned from my job right that means there was no money coming in anymore after that, right? The banks want, they're going to loan you money. Yeah. They want to know what sources of income coming in. I had W-2s, which is great, yeah. right? Danny was 1099, and you know how that goes with 1099, right? Yeah. There's going to be a lot of issues with, the, with with trying to get a loan. Right. I didn't know a lot of stuff about Danny. You know, um, he didn't know any credit cards. Mm -hmm. I didn't, like, it's a lot of stuff that, you know, I, I should have asked, you know? Sure. And so I was caught, caught off guard a lot of with a lot of stuff where it was hard getting a business loan. So I ran my credit multiple times. I had, I had really good credit at the time. I had like 750 mm -hmm. around there. So that was one of the hurdles was getting money. Gotcha. Right. And so I ended up, uh, thank God I'm saying, th I think like the things do happen for a reason since 18, I, I opened up like my first credit card. And after that, it was like once every two years, 
year and a half. So by then, I have already had like about twelve or thirteen personal cre- uh, personal credit cards, and I had a, even a personal line of credit from Wells Fargo. Yeah, I don't even know why I got that, but I did. So I had all these credit cards, and I was actively using about maybe two of them. Yeah, and it just came down on the wire. Where I only only got one loan from Lift Fund, which we we know Lift Fund helps out like small businesses for twenty thousand. That was it. Yeah. And the rest was all balance transfers, man, from my credit cards. Huh. So I know I had put in like just six thousand dollars cash of my own money. So it was like six thousand around there, and and Danny put in around the same. But all that after that was all my credit cards. So I'll balance transfer, cash out, put it, you know, in in the business bank account. Yeah. And uh, it was nuts, man. That that was it was bananas. So it took us a year actually to open up Alio. And okay. It was twenty sixteen when. I came over. I took over that gym, okay. gutted it. I told him, this is the way it's going to go down, Danny. It's the only reason I'm going to be doing this. Because there was a lot more shit that happened, man. Yeah. I was this close to actually opening up an OTF. What's that? Uh, Orange Theory. Oh. It was, a, it was a lot of shit that happened before, oh, before that. I could have okay. been. Could have been. Kind of yeah. gone down a lot of different directions I spo- prior to. I, yeah, I spoke to like, uh, like a, a big wig from Laredo like, that actually like bought out, which is interesting, their structure. Uh-huh. He bought out like this whole thing for South Texas, and I had to ask permission from him because... Apparently, San Antonio, there was only one at the time. And uh, they were like, no, we can't give you San Antonio's take in. And I was like, well, I'll go back to Corpus. Yeah. You know, I was like, I had resigned from Golds, but it, it wasn't because I wanted to. It's because I just, it was, I was done because done. of the of the management. Yeah. I could have probably stayed at Golds Gym maybe two more years just to save more money. Because yeah. I was I had a good lifestyle. I, had, I was training my ass off, but it was fun because I could, you know, get paid to train and I would take off when I wanted to. The problem is, you know, I have to train X amount of hours before I go on vacay. It, it was, it was a lifestyle, you know, you just kind of get used to. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, I don't know. Yeah. That's great. So, so I mean, yeah, you, you're talking about partnerships and, and dealing with like, you know, I had, I had one where I had two other partners, you know, so it was three, so mm-hmm. it's a little different because now you have, you know, they can outvote you, et cetera. You know, it's a little bit different, but like, that's a very challenging dynamic when you, you know, it's not just a solo preneur, it's, you know what I mean? And, and, but to be able to work through that partnership yeah. at the same time and to, to, to last this long and, and yeah. the things that you're doing, you know what I mean? Like, um, that take, that's work, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a lot of work. And I think the reason it does work is because we know our roles. Yeah. Um, you know, since day one, Danny knows that, you know, I'm pretty much the guy that's going to like have the vision and I'm, we're going to do this, this way, da, da, da. Yeah. And he's gonna be the hands-on guy. Like okay. it's kind of it's always been like that, and it works out very well. Yeah. Um. I told Danny in the very beginning, dude. Do you even know what risk is? This is a big risk. Da, da. Yeah. I remember one point he came up to me. This like the first three months when we opened up. When, 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 it was still like the old gym. We're trying to got you. change it up. Yeah. But he's like, hey man, I was like, you know, I'm training a lot. Do you think I can like uh take like fifty percent of each session? And I was like, bro, I was like, there's no way in hell that that's gonna happen. You know, when I told him, da, 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 da. Yeah. he's like, he understood. Like, the thing is, he understands. He's like, okay, I get it. Because he's younger than me. Okay. And uh, and so we were, we ended up, we were only paying ourselves like a thousand, you know, a month. It was nothing. Yeah. Right? And I was yeah. living off my credit card. Yeah. And, you know, but he got on board and he was like, you know what? Let's do a 500. It's nothing. Pretty much, we shouldn't even pay ourselves anything, right? right at that right. point. Yeah. But we were like, man, head over. Yeah. 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 I mean, the fitness industry in itself is is expensive to like. I mean, to start and yeah. you know, as far as the equipment and everything else and all oh, the money yeah. you got to put into it. But operating and then op and then you know how cyclical people are with just their you know, yeah, their gym memberships. I know people who've got three, four, oh all, yeah, all different mm-hmm. ones. You know yeah. what I mean? And so, um, so yeah, it's it's competitive, it's stressful. But I mean, tell me a little bit about kind of the. You, you talked about um, Corpus and then moving here and then yeah. just kind of like um, the just the dynamic, right? Like coming from smaller town, border town as well. Like, you know what I mean? It's, I know Corpus isn't such a border town, but smaller, mm-hmm. right? Um, mm-hmm. But then coming to San Antonio and then and then going to school. So you finished school there? Yeah, PSA? yeah. I ended up getting two degrees. Okay. Well, surprisingly, I, I still look back. And I'm like, damn, I have two degrees. That's been crazy because yeah. like I'm telling you that. You know, amazing dad, but luckily he wasn't pushy like, hey, you got to be a doctor. You got to be a... No, he just yeah. said, hey, go to college. That's it. He was old school. Yeah. So you don't want to be doing this with me. I used to help him cut grass and all that. You don't want to be doing this? Go to college because yeah. I hated being outside. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so really, I mean, it was going from Corpus San Antonio. I mean, it was a big deal. Like, I feel like Corpus is just uh, no shade to Corpus, but it's a very small minded mentality. Yeah. I feel like everyone knows each other. Like, you know, everyone back in the day when downtown was hot, yeah. downtown, and it's nothing but trouble, you know. So you'll find yourself in trouble. People are always just look, looking at you the wrong way. Yeah. Going to San Antonio, everyone's about their just, I'm going to say about their business because San Antonio, we're, I feel like we're, we're getting there about, about our business, sure. but everyone is just doing their own thing, Yeah, you know. And. So, yeah, I mean, UTSA, you know, just seeing it's a big melting pot, you know, nothing compared to Houston, but you know uh, what I mean? It's yeah. just compared to Corpus? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, tell me right now, like, as far as the vision, like, where you see where Alio's going, because I know there's there's things in the works and stuff that you, yeah. you may not be able to talk about, but yeah, tell me the vision now, like, eight years later, I mean, it's not just... Yeah, you know... <clears throat> The vision, the vision has always been the, the whole purpose factor, right? Of, Which is what? You know, paying my trainers, right? Being able, it's, it's really, for me, for me, my vision is I want to be the first person to be able to build that perfect compensation plan for my trainers, which it's going to happen because I'm about to do something right now. Uh, next year, it's already done. Okay. Um, I'm building, uh, I'm going to have an open gym now, which I'll let it out, but it's going to be special along with another business next to it. Okay. But with that gym and the gym I have now, which is a private studio, yeah, the comp plan is going to work perfectly, you know, where I'm able to really take care of my trainers, hire the best. Um, and you know, give them benefits at one point, like that's the goal, right? Everybody's yeah. giving them the best, but be able to be the first to do that and be known to be, you know, that guy that takes care of the training. I'm trying to elevate the personal training name. You know what I mean? That's what I'm trying to do. Gotcha. You know, I don't want people to look down on personal trainers. That's really the main goal. So I'm right now, you know, things kind of change in my mind. Like they're like, all right, you know, I want to be over here. I want to be over here. But I'm happy right now with what's going on. And I want to just focus here in San Antonio and whatever happens, happens. If yeah. God wants to open up more doors, so be it. Yeah. But I already got a lot on my plate right now as we speak because because the uh, other business is going to be is gonna be crazy it's gonna be big yeah so the ne- the one next to the gym is gonna be nuts oh okay yeah, 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 I, yeah. I think it's I a big surprise a big surprise yeah yeah um so when you're talking about the vision as far as taking care of your, your the trainers and the compensation plans and stuff like that like are you talking about like trainer person personal training with like their with the big box gyms? Well, believe it or not, right? It's yeah. the thing is, you know, trainers, the average trainer, right? Yeah. Now, it depends on the state, really just makes like ten to $15,000 a year. If, that tw- maybe, if they're lucky, maybe twenty twenty five. if they're lucky. And that's due to, you know, they're not getting coached correctly, not having the edu- education, doing it for the wrong reasons, do it as a side gig, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I highly believe that if you're going to jump in the game, I'm, I'm big on education, um, but go to a corporate gym to learn, you know, okay, everything about, you know, how to be structured and so forth. And then, then dip out on your own if you want. Yeah. But I don't really think anyone should be doing things on their own. Cause really people need structure. People need to understand where to start and so forth. Yeah. And luckily that's what happened to me where I learned a lot about software, but you also got to take it upon yourself to learn. Yeah. Well, I just could. And I asked that question because, you know, social media, Instagram, all these guys that are, you know, uh, in the fitness industry and the stuff like that, um, you see some of them starting out in big box gyms, and then you see some of them kind of just jumping in like like that, like you know, jumping in into the field and kind of doing their own thing, and then yeah. kind of seeing like you guys trying to figure it out and make seeing what works. And yeah, you know, I don't know, I don't know what their business models are. I don't know what their the income is and all that type of stuff. But it seems like you can start kind of on, on your own, like, but at the same time, I don't know, like, like, you know, price wise, like, I mean, or income wise, like what that looks like, you know? I mean, so I was able to like hit six figures at the gym. Right. Okay. I was able to make that, more, that much at one point on my exit. Yeah. I could have made more if things didn't get in the way of, you know, with just management. Okay. You know, there's a lot of stuff that happened, but you know, you can make good money as a personal trainer. Yeah. The problem is, you know, Comp, comp plans change in the corporate world. Yeah. There's, you know, uh, and I got to remember, and whenever you work out, you work at a corporate gym, right? Members are coming in, right? Yeah. The, the company is 
pretty much marketing for you. Yeah. If you're a 1099, you're on your own. You got to learn how to market. Yeah. You know, where are you going to market on Facebook? Facebook yeah. mom, mom's page or something like that? Like, you have to know all that stuff, man. So that's what I always say is yeah. a lot of times what people do, a lot of trainers do, is they build up their clientele and then they go somewhere else and usually they, those people follow. So yeah, that's kind of how you, people start. start it's kind of what you kind of see in San Antonio, right? Like a little bit. like Yeah. When they... Um, so what does Sam do for fun, man? Wow, I should bring my. I mean, I know because it kind of it's kind of like I, I wanted to kind of take it a little a little uh, less business and kind of yeah. like. Uh, you know, this year this year we're kind of toning it down. But me and my me and my wife like to go out. We do like to go out. Okay. Uh, we like to party, you know, uh, vacation, so forth. But I always say there has to be like a beach, <laughs> and then the nightlife, and that's kind of like what we like okay. to do. So that's our thing. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I see the nightlife stuff, I guess, because of the hours that you work and stuff like that. So, like, um, yeah, um, I think, you know, work hard, play hard, man. Yeah, you know for mean? sure. And, um, you got you to gotta give time for yourself because I know, I know the grind and, and, you know, working on the business and working in the business and everything yeah. else. But it takes a toll on you, man. It does. It does um, but, man, I'm telling you, it's just uh, – I just, uh, I remember being in Cancun with my wife, you know, and going into a, a certain, it was a, a, like a little bar or club. It was nice. And in my head, you know, I really don't have to speak out loud because, you know, like my wife can get turned off by certain things, you know, like kids, et cetera. And I was like, yeah. I'm, I, I'm in here spending money in this establishment when I can be at home building mine. Yeah. And it actually upsets me. Huh. I'm, I, I want to create things. That's, that's what my, that's what I love to do. Yeah. So, so. No, I think the, Creation process for me is probably the thing that gives me the most high. Yeah. Right. Is like creating it from scratch, being able to not anybody tell you how to do it. Right. It's like you, you figure like how you pick a little bit of everything and kind of how you, you know, created the, the aesthetic of, of Alio and everything. Like, like that type of stuff for me is like, I love that. Because yeah. No, like, for sure. Sure. You know, um, well, I mean, let's talk about your fitness journey. I mean, so do you do you work out twenty four seven? No, no, man. Uh, I mean, because I started because of football. I started because of football, right? That's what that's did you play? Receiver. Okay. Yeah, receiver. Right. Um, it started because of that, man. Um, in middle school, pretty much. Okay. And then I took it like really serious. I would say my sophomore year or, you know, doing two days and all that and just going out there, pulling tires and as serious as possible. Right. Cause yeah. some of us have to work harder than, than other people that are genetically blessed, yeah. you know, uh, from an athletic standpoint. And from there, at that point on, man, it's when I just fell in love with it. And I was extremely serious and strict, you know, when I came over here, just, you know, old school boiled chicken and brown rice and all that yeah. hardcore into it. All I did was work out yeah. you know, my, for that first semester Two a days as well, eleven PM and so forth. And yeah, I mean, my thing was I didn't feel good if I didn't work out midday into training my next clients, you know? Yeah. Uh now taking on the gym, things changed. Like it wasn't that easy, you know, yeah. working out at all. Like, you know, and as a matter of fact, I have to work out somewhere else because that's the office, you know. Mm-hmm. I hear a phone call, da da, like get behind the desk. Yeah. I, I, I get, I get like guilty trips, you know, if I'm not doing something because gotcha. the grind doesn't stop. Like, it's just, it's, you're cheating on, on your, on your business, man. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. It's like, I have to leave to work out. You know what I mean? So where do you usually work out? Like at the, so I actually, since I just got the house, I just quit, but actually I was working out a lifetime. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, because I moved, uh, but I was living right behind it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting, man, because like, because like, I've had thoughts of like, no, we just open up a gym just to put a place we get the equipment that we want and put it in a place and then, you know, let other people work out there. Like, but yeah. I mean, that's not how Alio is, but I mean, in my mind, I'm like, you have the equipment. Yeah. So I was working out there for a long time. Like yeah. In the very beginning, I was. Okay. For sure. Like for first few years. But after a while. Yeah. It's like, you know, uh, or Danny be like, hey, Sam, uh, da, da, da. and then I go pick up the phone or it's always some kind of distraction. You know, fires and stuff. Yeah, it's just, yeah, you know, people get burnt out of certain things. You know, even with personal training, when I was doing training nonstop, 
in the corporate world. Yeah. It came a time where I was getting extremely tired. I was like, man, you know, leaving at 11 p.m. Yeah. You know, it's you just start getting burnt out of certain things, and my mind just works differently. And it's just like it's just kind of like what I tell people, right? If you're gonna, when well, people put up a, a gym in their house or whatnot, or just a treadmill, yeah. And next thing you know, there's like clothes over it. You know, it's like they just stop using it because yeah. you have to remove yourself. My home is the gym. I'm at I'm at the gym more, yeah. like at my fitness club. I'm, at, I'm I'm there more than even at the house. Yeah. So I have to separate myself from my from the gym because that's my house. Yeah. So that's how my mind works. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, I think it took me a long time for the home gym to actually be something that I consider separate. You know what I mean? That yeah. it, it is in my house, but. I don't have to drive somewhere. Mm-hmm. I just have to open the door. But then it's like, I close the door. That's my spot. It's awesome. You can do that for sure, man. If yeah. you can do that. Yeah. No, I, got it made. I, made it, I made it. I made it a habit. And now I'm trying to convince Jen to uh, move it over to the bigger garage. Yeah. And then let her have the small one. But um, so we're in that process right now. I think we'll maybe by the end of the month, hopefully. Yeah. But you're, you're one of the lucky ones then because usually I think it's mostly that guys that, that can do it. Mostly it's the guys that could do that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Get my garage. Da, da, da. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. I mean, uh, it's just, it's everyone just thinks differently. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I just, for me, it, it's, it's come down to like time, right? Like yeah. if it's convenient in the sense of like, there was an anytime fitness. Um, this is a thing before I went to you guys. There was an anytime fitness that was open on Evans and um, I don't remember, uh, Bulverde, I think. And um, I'm like, oh, it's it's on the way home. It's yeah. like, you know, six, four miles. I don't know what it was. And I was like six, you know, 10 minutes. I'm there. But because of, uh, I think they closed down too, but just the way that on the side of the road it was, I'm like, it's not as convenient as opposed to it being like, Hey, what, you know what I mean? Like, that's just not that you say that because location, 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 hundred percent. And I always like it's it's crazy that I always talk about that. You know, if you place a business like where the ramp is, like the ramp is over here, and the business is right here, and you just miss, you have to go all the way around. That turns people off. Hundred percent. That's cra- that's crazy. There's a there's a Chick Fil A going up right there on two eighty one on that side where the H E B is at. You one you mean? Yeah, on Northwoods. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm in my mind when I saw it, I'm like, why are they putting one right there? They have one just down the street. Yeah. It's on the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. And I was curious if they're gonna keep the other one open. Someone said they're not. But I was like, no, it makes sense. I mean they get in traffic regardless. Yeah. So it's not like Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you think about where Starbucks was at and stuff like that. Like not you know, not just the one by you, but like all of them, right? Yeah. Like kind of how there's they some are. businesses that I can like I feel get away with it. You know, Waterburger in the center, like people always go to Waterburger. But yeah. there's some some businesses that you don't want to risk like locating the business somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Especially if you have to go to it like a gym. Yeah. Like, nonstop. Because yeah. you know what, just go to the other one over here. It's just boom. People yeah. wanna be able to get in and get out. Yeah. hundred you know? percent. And I think that's for me, that's why I think and I get mad at myself, like, and I, I'm like, why are you complaining that you didn't get in the gym? It's, it's in your house, bro. Like, but you mentally, if you separate it, you're yeah. like, oh, it's over there. I, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I just have to get myself in the damn door. Yeah. If I don't get myself in the door, then I'm, I'm I messed it up. You know yeah. what I mean? And so, like, I mean, when I'm fighting myself, that's when I just literally just like just go in the door. If I yeah. have to stand in there for ten minutes before I get started, then it, then I just happen to start working out just because I'm there. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. But um, so so you don't have a, I mean, do you have like regular days where you're working out or you uh, no, just no, whenever, man. whenever you no. have time? Yeah. Yeah. Whenever, whenever I feel like it now. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'm on a different mindset, dude. Like it's just. You're in growth mode right now. Dude. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah it's just one of those things that like I just turned a switch for me. It's like zero to 100 with everything. Okay. Like, I'm weird like that, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, like I like to drink uh, tequila. Okay. Right, I was gonna say, and C4. I go on my yeah, <laughs> and I go on my spurts while you know I drink tequila here and there, whatever. Yeah, and then I just stop cold turkey. Yeah, you know, or it's just it's weird. Like I'm just I'm just a switch kind of guy. Yeah, you know, so no, no, that's what Jen says. Um, for me, it's like um, I'm an all in or all out. Like I can't slowly, gradually get to it. It's like I just it's like a switch. Yeah, yeah. And so like when I had the the train for the competition stuff, it was like, okay, we gotta lose weight, gotta do that. So it's like start you know no, for sure yeah i mean 
that's their thing, right? That's why we have challenges. But yeah, you know, uh, vacations. You know, that was one thing back then that get me going. Like, all right, boom, it's time to shred. Yeah. You know, yeah. in three months, and you know, it's one thing though. Like I said, it's just the running, the running a business, and trying to do like a lot. You know, mm-hmm. versus me being just a personal trainer back then and just focusing on the clients I had. Yeah, it's two different animals. So oh, it's yeah. just, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, no, I, I think, I mean, it's like everything, right? It's what you put into it. And yeah. I think that if it's important to you and that's what you want to do, and then yeah. you know, and you go all in, and that's and it's healthy for you. It's not like you're gonna run yourself into the ground. Oh, for then, sure. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Like you know, there's that's what gets me up, man. Every day, and I was yeah. telling someone, I was like, I'm gonna. Uh, I, I I just shift left and right, you know, I'm like moving around and I was telling somebody right now, like my high is the business and what I'm doing. That's my high. Like I, I love it. Yeah. You know, there's a point of time where working out like that game. was the ultimate thing for me. Yeah. Like in my twenties where I would get nervous before a workout. Yeah. I was telling somebody, like, I, 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 I stopped feeling that after 25 when you get jitters before the workout. Cause you don't know if you're going to get X amount of pull-ups, you're not going to be able to bench what you benched last week and you get pissed off because you couldn't bench what you benched last week. You know, I'm on a different, like just, I'm thinking different now, you know? So now yeah. it's the business, right? It's that same way. Yeah. Business wise. Yeah. What's, uh, what's your biggest challenge with just running a business? Like for you as, as an operator, as an owner, as a visionary, like, you know what I mean? Cause I know for me, like I know what my weaknesses are. What's, what's yours? Um, Wow. Well, you know, I feel like every year there's always, this is probably what it is. I take everything personal. Mm. I'm very, like, passionate about what I do. Yeah. And that's why, you know, Danny's the one that deals with, like, you know, if there's anyone that's upset or whatnot, because I'll take offense over everything. Yeah. You know, when yeah. you build something, yeah. like, and you give it all you have, and then someone's saying something, it's like, baby. I, it, yeah, it hurts, man. Yeah. So, principles, you know, being honest and extremely ethical, like, I don't like landlords. Like, you, uh, recently, you know, I had an issue with the landlord, for instance, you know, and uh, long story short, I had to hire an attorney, and instead of paying $6,000 for reconciliation fees, uh, he paid me. Um, I was, like, 1400 So, like, battling, you know, it, it's funny. I think a lot of people get screwed over a lot. They, they, they don't even know because they don't want to fight. You know, I, yeah. I'll fight for a dollar because yeah. I think it's the principle of, there's a lot of people that, you know, you charge back some small businesses, you know, and it's a, it's a nuisance fighting, you know, just dealing with chargebacks, yeah. but I'll take it there. So it's just taking everything personal is, is probably like the setback for me. Okay. Yeah. And so what do you, how, how do you handle that going forward? Handle that? Yeah. Mm, uh, I mean, if, if that's delegating a, those, some of the tasks, you know, that's always the goal. Okay. But putting the right people in place. Okay. Um, but, you know, what I've done actually recently, the past, probably the past few months, and I actually told, you know, Sammy this, and, and even my videographer, uh, Ashley knows this, my wife, uh, is I don't answer text messages to, like, noon. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm on a different, right now, I'm on a different... Uh, Clock. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. I yeah. pull all-nighters. I've you know, to work. Yeah, I pull the all-nighters. <laughs> I don't answer phone calls, nothing, emails. Right, and my videographer sends me like there's a video right now that he sent me for the big surprise that we're gonna have. Yeah. Right. He sent it to me, I think like Monday. I don't watch it at a certain time, like you know, past nine p.m. I don't watch anything because I don't want it to stress me out. Yeah. And then I'm calling him like you got to change this because I already know I'm not gonna like it. <laughs> I promise you. Yeah. He's, you're gonna have to change a few things sure. for sure, for sure. Yeah. I had him over last night, for instance, and we we're going over certain things and. And it's like, you know, I just pick and choose now when to open things that I know are going to stress me out. That's why I don't have an Apple Watch. Okay. You know, I, all the messages. I can't have that. Yeah. You know, I don't, if I'm on the floor training people, there's no phone on me. Yeah. You know, so if some crazy happens, so be it, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. So I remember my wife actually, we probably got an iPhone a couple years ago. She got me uh, one of those Samsung watches. Yeah. Right. And I was like, hon, take it back now. Yeah. Like, you know, sorry. You know, I'm very straightforward. Sure. And sometimes I might offend certain people. That's unfortunate. I learned that. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, I, I don't want it. Take yeah. it back. You know, I can't do that. You know, I'm going to get stressed out. And yeah. she's like, hon, hon, hon. And she returned it. But, but. Well, I mean, it's self-awareness, man, that's a big one. I mean, it's it's like knowing our weaknesses and going, okay, 
Uh, I know what's going to, you know, create this and, and, you know, spur this up and everything. So that, that's, at least you know that, and at least that, oh, you yeah. know, putting the right people in place and, and being able to do that. But, um, you know, that's, that's growth, bro. It's part of growth. Yeah. Right. Like knowing sure. that. Um, so what, what do you think you're good You're the best at? The best? Yeah. Like, what do you, what do you, like, what's your thing that you're like, this is when I'm, uh, when I'm doing this, uh, this is it. Well, when I was a personal trainer, I always felt like I was the best. Like, I, okay. that's my mentality. Like, I think that's the mentality that I'm big on not telling people how, how to do certain things. At my age now, I'm like, do you, yeah. right? So my way is not the right. I'm going to say my way is not the right way for you, right? Yeah. I don't like people, like, thinking, oh, that's the way it's supposed to be. No. Yeah. Like, for me, it's just try to be the best at what you're doing. Right now, it's I want to have the best gym out there, you know? I want to compete with the big dogs. You know, I don't know if anyone knows out there, but I did get an email from Lifetime wanting to buy out Alio, mm. right? Uh, this was a couple of weeks ago. And I have no intentions of selling Alio at all. I don't care how many figures. I, I'm not about the money. Like, yeah. I'm literally, I, I'm on a mission. So it's funny because Annie's like, well, we should call them, see what they have to say. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I'm calling and record it just to have it, you know, and just post sure. it or something. But I was like, I didn't do it just because, it's too much stuff going on. I don't need any distractions, you know. Yeah. But I know they'll, they'll come knocking, you know, uh, in 10 years or so forth to, to try or whatever. But I'm trying to compete with the big dogs, you know. And yeah. if people didn't know out there, uh, with all the hype we drew up, that came with the risk, you know, with uh, Alio popping out. We had articles written about us in 2016, a lot of Facebook negative comments, whatever. The SEOs, our SEO increased like crazy. Mm-hmm. So if you, there's six things that if you uh, Google, like, Luxury gym San Antonio will be one or two, depending, but right behind Lifetime. Okay. So we done pretty well from a local standpoint yeah. to be able to get an amazing SEO is everything, you know, People yeah. Googling you. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I mean, I think, I, I think for the most part from, from, and I guess, you know, I'm outside still, but at the same time, I'm, I know you, I know Danny, my wife trains there, like just the, the reputation. I, I think, I think you guys have built, something you know really great and i think that the longevity kind of shows that you know what i mean and and so yeah i'm looking forward to kind of seeing you know the new gym the new you know all the new ideas that are coming up and um you know i'm just looking forward to seeing you know and and again we've had our relationship because um you had you know we've had some some business ideas and things and and you know, uh, and then now recently with your, your new home. So mm-hmm. as a homeowner now and, and yeah. how, how are you enjoying that? man? It's awesome, dude. This is my year. Yeah. It's crazy. This is my, I promise you, it's my year. I'm um, enjoying seeing your videos about like all like your, like your, the <laughs> all your yeah. uh, uh, videos with the house and the raccoons. Yeah, and man. It's saying to have, you know, fun. it's my first home. Yeah. Um, And, you know, I remember like my dad, he asked me like, I think it was like two years or two years ago. He'll be like, hey, we don't have a house yet. I was like, Cause business comes first. I can't be running my credit. I don't know when I'm going to be uh, getting a loan. Yeah. Every year prior to this, and you know, technically the pandemic's kind of screwed a lot of stuff up. Yeah. But I'm like ready to take a loan if I have to, to like expand. Yeah. Right. So that, you know, I know that with a house, there's overhead, you know. Yeah. I look, I look everything as a business and it's probably a bad thing. No. You know, you probably would not want to be my friend. No. Uh, you know, uh, I'm just saying because. You know, little things like, you know, uh, having a lawn, you know, you, you're going to either pay somebody or you got to Time. pay for the equipment. Yeah. Um, you know how it is, right? Mm-hmm. So I just, I, I have to calculate when I was going to do it. And, you know, as you know, it wasn't the easiest journey to even get a house, you know, because, you know, I pay myself, you know, a certain salary and it's, it's, everything's calculated. Sure. I don't take money from the business. Business always comes first for me. So it's the blessing is how it happened. I'm not going to go into it, but yeah. being in the house that was destined for me because it's a beautiful home. You know, we put two offers, I think, or three offers on three different houses. It didn't go through because all this BS, whatever. But I've got the best house out of all of them. And I'm yeah, it was meant to be. Yeah, it's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's been no, a blessing. I'm happy for you guys. And, and um, you know, like I, I can tell that um, just how you're enjoying it. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy to be part of that process, but at the same time, it's just it's cool to see how, how, um, just enjoying you know that the the actual house and, and being in it and everything else, just to see you guys. I mean, low key, like everything, dude. You don't understand, dude. I'm out there, I'm I'm, I'm picking up the cigars again. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to be outside. 
Yeah. Like, you know, I kind of became a vampire for a year, year and a half, you know, yeah. just grind, go to the apartment, shut myself out. Because this year, I is really not, I'm not going out as much as I used to at yeah. all, period, you know. Yeah. So being able to just enjoy the house, you know, getting out there, yeah. you know, it's, it's just fucking awesome. It's just awesome, dude. Yeah. It's so great. Yeah. Awesome, Got all those trees. Like, it's funny. One thought that I had in my head was I was down on the deck and I saw all these beautiful trees and I'm like, these, these, these trees are mine. Uh, and cause I, I lived in apartments my whole life, dude, yeah. you know, my whole life. And so I'm like, I wonder if I was a, a kid, you know, cause right now I'm like thinking, Oh, I got to keep up with all these trees and da, da, da. I was like, but when I was a kid, man, what I'd be doing, I'd be running around this deck, you know, trying to climb up this tree, you know, it, it, you know, I, just, I have a big imagination, man. I'm like, sure. well, what would I do if I was a child right now? You know, yeah, like, th- this would be freaking amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a playground, dude. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, it's a good spot, man. I'm, I'm glad it all worked out with that one. I'm uh, glad you took. I'm, I'm glad you went. Uh, when I text you on Saturday, yeah, I remember I was hopping around looking. My wife was upset about all that crap, you know. Yeah, yeah. The previous night, it was a crazy weekend. Yeah. I'm glad when I said, "Hey, can we look at this one?" You're like, "Tomorrow on Sunday." I was like, "That's Let's my go. boy Mike, yeah. always grinding." Let's go. So we went oh, Sunday. Boom. It's it's um, I don't know. It's it's just like you said. It's I think speed for me from sports and everything else is, it's speed, right? Like speed kills. Um. But in business, if you're first, you know what I mean? Then you have first options and stuff like that. So though that's how I look at it. Like I've had transactions where I've had people from, you know, not from San Antonio that, you know, they I was referred to, and, you know, slower cities or, you know what I mean? And where I mean slower, meaning like they don't operate as fast as either here or Houston or whatnot. It's just everything's real tranquilo, right? And so I uh, had one of the guys, that her, his dad was like, he's like, man, you work you operate different than down here and i'm like ah, I, I don't there's too much going on we can't just go you know despacito and everything just like that so that's just how i operate i don't i don't like to operate like you know oh let's just do it like this and so um so that's kind of why you know when you say hey let's if i can do it then we'll go i, mean, I really think that if you didn't go or you didn't tell me about sunday it wouldn't be there dude 100 percent. yeah maybe I, I mean dude that i couldn't believe that house was in that neighborhood i yeah. was dude i'm telling you yeah so that's awesome, brother. Um, so just an entrepreneur type of thing. So if you're looking back at um, young Sam, mm-hmm. you know, and you're young now, but I mean, like oh, yeah, before yeah. you started, before you started personal training, when you were like mm-hmm. talking to, to your friend Danny about doing that, what advice would you give him now? Knowing what you know now. And everything that you've gone through, what advice would you keep, like, keep knocking on doors? Like, you keep grinding. I would say it's, it's, it sounds corny, but I think what has gotten me even to this space I have, I got right now. Yeah. It was, it was me literally not going home and moping because I, because the, 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 the other landlord, you know, was giving me shit about going, uh, leasing his spot. Mm-hmm. But me staying at the office, you know, I'm pulling an all-nighter and getting a call 12 hours later from another uh, broker and sealing the deal. Because mm. in that moment, I could have gone home and who knows the next day my my, my, my uh, thought, you know, process. Yeah. But it's like, just keep going and knocking on doors nonstop, you know. So it's just, yeah, dude, just, just keep knocking. Keep going. You have to keep going. Yeah. No, it's Regardless good. of what may happen, regardless of rejection, yeah. you have to keep going. Yeah, no, and I think especially now, especially after COVID and after all these things where you get a lot of people who are going in through going into uh, like side hustles and different little like, you know, doing their own thing, entrepreneurship, kind of leaving the corporate gig, et cetera. You, some of them don't, they don't, they don't last. Some of them fail. Some of them, you know, they don't, they don't want it or they think it's going to be easy, et cetera. And I think um, getting that first couple of no's, it kind of knocks them on their ass. And then the thing is, the, what I left out is, you know, I can't tell you to keep knocking on doors, but you are you don't have a passion for something, man. Like, I feel like you, you have to have some kind of purpose. You have to have some kind of passion for something. Yeah. Because, yeah, we live right now in a side hustle world, you know, with social media. Like, oh, this is what it takes to make money, da, da, da. But yeah. uh, it's funny because I saw this one post from a guy a while back. Uh, He said I had seven, he had seven side hustles, da, da, da. He was like the most honest dude. Yeah. He's like, but... You know, 
the way I'm moving forward now is I ended up, I had to delete five of them. I was like, and now I'm seeing progress in two, yeah. you know? So it's like, uh, yeah, man, it's like knock on doors, but hopefully, you know, you actually have love what you do. Focusing on something, you know, yeah. on a, be a master of your craft, be excited about what you're doing yeah. and find your purpose. Yeah. No, hundred percent, hundred percent, man. Um, well, bro, I, um, I'm happy that, uh, your the longevity has led you to where you're at right now. Um, I'm happy that this is your year, including the house. And I'm looking forward to this announcement because I really want to see um, the idea in person and kind of seeing all of the plans. Um, what what um, where? Well, I'll put everybody. I'll put your stuff in in the in the notes for the podcast, but. Um, it's so unfortunate that I get to talk about a lot of stuff. No, There's I so know. So much we, stuff that's happening is ridiculous, we man. We can have a, part, have a part two after you've opened up. Yeah, yeah. For We're, sure. There's so things that happen that when we open uh, the gym, it's crazy. I, I, I want to, uh, let's, 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 let's do the team. We'll do the team. We'll do all, we'll do yeah, you, yeah, Danny, yeah. and we'll yeah. bring it all in. And, and, uh, um, I feel like there's a lot of people right now that yeah. are stuck Yeah. in, in some shit. And that's why I say that small details matter because like, oh, yeah. he's going through that, you yeah. know, da, da, da. it's like so many little details that are important for an entrepreneur to really like see like yeah. that happens, you know, you have to fight for this. You have to, you know what I mean? You know, just it's crazy. 100%. And, I, and, and, I, and I think, you know, we usually have um, other people on that are some version of, of other different things. And we don't get into all those little details. And I think uh, only for time's sake, but at the same time, like, um, I think it's important no, for, for sure to, to document one, right. For, for our, our, uh, to keep it forever. Right. But at the same time for other people to kind of go, okay, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, he, he started here. He was from Corpus. I, I'm this or that. And then see you and go, like you said to him, like to your boy, like I can do that. Like I want to do that yeah. and then be able to kind of follow. And I think that's the, the whole purpose for me if, with this is to kind of like, to, to tell your story, but at the same time for other people to see it and go, hey man, everyone just talks about their W's, man. No one talks yeah. about their L's and I'm big on talking about your L's. Yeah. I feel like people can relate to L's, hundred percent. you know? And that to me is like, I think that if more people talked about the L's, man, yeah. I feel like everyone would be like on the same page, same page, you know? That's why I love Dion, bro. I'm sorry. Coach, oh, coach, yeah. coach prime for me, bro. It's yeah. not, it's not the fact that bravado and the flash and all that, it's the old school. It's the it's it's the, the real talk. And as yeah. far as like, yeah, he can say like, hey, you know, the, the the joke is he's like, I'm always winning, and it's like, okay, yeah, but you're four and four. He's like, you yeah. know, but I'm winning in life, man. Yeah, and that's what he's telling these players, right? And I was telling somebody about this. I'm like, you know, it's his message, right? It's his message about life, and it's like, I and, I, and it was funny. I was joking around with my daughter would live, and, and we're in the truck, and I'm, you know, it was during Halloween. I had the costume on and everything, and I was like. All we do is win, baby. It's all we do. And she's like, Dad, you can't always win. And I was like, yeah, you can because you can never lose. You only yeah. learn. That L is not a loss. It's a learn. Absolutely. And so yeah. it's win and learn. If you only learn, you always win. Yeah. And she just went. Oh. Yeah, I mean, the reason I, like, I do like Dion is just because uh, like he doesn't care what people think. Like he's, yeah. he can be him. He's, he's, he's himself, himself no matter what. 100%. 100%. Yeah. And, and I think that if – Everybody kind of took that and took what you said as far as about the, you know, uh, talking about the L's is um, 100% where it's real. And it's not like just the bravado, like the Insta, you know, world and TikTok and all that. But, um, but yeah, man, that's what, that's what I want to kind of, you know, talk about with you. And then again, um, have you on, but I'm, I'm so, I'm so intrigued. I'm so curious because I, I yeah. love the creation part. So to see that, man, and, and uh, I wish y'all the best with it. Um, and, um, yeah, man, we'll have you back on. We'll, we'll do some more. Oh, yeah. All right. Ooh, brother. Ready? Appreciate you, man. Of course. Right, My you, pleasure, man. You take Thank care. You.